Hello everyone, my name is James and this is the first tutorial in a series of tutorials on Reactor 5 and how to create your own instruments. Now, I think it's important to note before we get started that Reactor 5 isn't primarily made for creating instruments. That's just one of its many features. Um, I think it does it pretty well, but uh, you know, software like Max or Pure Data uh, are primarily uh, made for those things, for creating instruments and programming synthesizers. Uh, Reactor is not, but I think it does it justice. I think I really like creating instruments in Reactor. I think it's fun. I think you can do a lot of cool things. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to open up Reactor 5. Another thing I wanted to mention is you know, why I'm creating these tutorials. When I first started learning Reactor, I watched tutorials on YouTube, and they were great at getting the basics down, but I was disappointed because they only showed you how to connect patch cables. They never showed you, they never explained to you what they were actually doing or how things worked. Or, you know, they didn't explain the math or physics behind anything. So my goal here is to help you understand what's going on. So by the end of these tutorials, you can actually create your own instruments. After I watched those tutorials, I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew how to copy them. But I didn't understand it. So I'm hoping to get you to understand uh, what's going on here. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is in the top right hand corner we have this button with an I okay if it's off it's dark gray if it's on it's light gray uh, that's hints and what hints are they're not gonna work for me because of my recording software it, it messes with it for some reason but they should work for you so when you take your mouse and if we point it over this magnifying glass in the upper left hand corner a box should appear next to the mouse and it should say browser. So they're just, they're literally hints. They hint at whatever you're pointing at. It'll explain to you what that thing is, what it does, uh, and maybe even a little bit of how it works. So hints are very useful. All right, so again, this is the browser window and this, what we call the side panel. Um, the first button here is player. It shows you the different players you can use to play synths. Uh, you have factory, which are the different factory presets Reactor uh, gives you when you buy it. User, which are if you save your own, you know, preset snapshots instruments. And we'll we'll explain what some of these are. There are certain languages here uh, that you have to understand: macros, ensembles, instruments, uh, snapshots. And we'll go over all that. And disks. That's basically just a file system. It's nice to be able to look at your files inside of Reactor sometimes. I tend not to use it, but it can be cool. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to show you is how to uh, hook up an instrument before we create one. So um, we'll click on Factory in the browser menu. Then we'll double click on Instruments. And they give you a lot. Automation, analyzers, effects, grooves, mixers, beats, Samples, sequencers, sound generators. We're going to click on synthesizers. And you only have to click once because down below gives you this really cool menu. And we're going to choose carbon, carbon 2. And you're going to double click on that. All right, now we have our workspace here. Now, how do you hook this up? Because right now, if we we're to play a note on the keyboard, we should see right here where it says MIDI. We'll, we'll see blue dots here uh, if it's working. And we do, so the keyboard's hooked up. Now, what this is, this is the in for the audio signal. And you have a maximum audio input for the slider. It's nice to be able to control the max. Output for the audio, and again, you have a max slider. Um, so if, w if this was working and hooked up right now, we'd see waves come right here through the output, and we don't. So, what we need to do is first, we're going to click this button, and it says off, CPU off. Now, what this means is the audio signal is now off. So, if this was hooked up and we were going to play a note, nothing would happen. 
And the reason you want to do that is because when you're hooking up, when you're connecting patch cables in Reactor, if you hook it up to something you're not supposed to on accident, there's a chance you could blow out your speakers. So to avoid that, we turn off the auto signal. All right, let's hook this up. So how do we do it? Well, do you see where it says left and right on carbon two? Because this is the carbon two object. So the left, you're going to left click your mouse and you're going to hold that down on this black dot. All right, and then when you drag, you should see this cable. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep that mouse held down, come over here and it should snap to the output one. Okay, and this output goes to your speakers. So now that's connected. And we want polyphony, so we're going to connect the right to this output too. So again, left click, hold down the click, drag the cable, it snaps, and you let go. All right. Now the last thing we have to do is hook up the input to the instrument. So again, left click, hold down, but look. There's no inputs, and it doesn't work. So what do we do here? Well, we create our own inputs. So you do the same thing and drag it, but now you're gonna hold down control and see, it creates an input. Let go of the click, then you can let go of control. Same thing with number two. Drag it over, hold down control, and then you can let go. And now we should be all hooked up. So I'm going to turn down the maximum output volume a little bit. We're going to enable the audio signal. And I'm going to press a button on the keyboard and we're going to you should see waves if this is working correctly. And there you have it. All right. So now that we know how to connect an instrument, let's create our own. So what we're going to do is up here in the top, there's an arrow. You're going to click it, go to File, and New Ensemble. So the very outer uh, most collection um, in Reactor is called an ensemble. And you can have many instruments belonging to a single ensemble. If you want. We're just going to create one. So this is our instrument right now. Now, one thing to notice is next to where it says Untitled Snapshot, uh, it might say something else here, but basically next to this box, there's going to be um, this gray box with kind of like these objects connected to the patch cables, it looks like. So if you click that and it's dark gray, that means editing mode is off. If you click on it and it's light gray, editing mode is on and you get these new options. So it's important to note that you have to have it on to be able to work, to be able to edit your instrument. All right. So if you notice, there are no knobs. Now why is that? Because we haven't added anything to it. It's an empty instrument. So what we're going to do is see how it says panel. This is the panel. Now we're going to go to new. Now our instrument is already connected to the in and output by default. So we're just going to double click on the instrument. And here we are in our workspace. So we have the left and right input, left and right output, and this is something new we haven't seen. Now again, if you have hint uh, on, if you just put your mouse over this, it should say voice combiner mixes a polyphonic audio signal to mono. So it tells you what it, what it is and what it does. And so that's why hints are cool. So basically it's what it says. Um, it turns polyphonic audio signals into mon monophonic. Now, you're going to have polyphony if you hook up to the left and right. If you hook up your uh, sound to the left, both the left and right, you should have polyphony anyways. So, uh, don't worry about that. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create an oscillator so we can get some sounds. Alright, so right click. And you want to right click in the gray space. If you right click on the object, we call these objects, then properties pertaining to the object will appear. Or actions, rather, pertaining to the object. What we want is more actions uh, pertaining to the space right here. 
So you right click, built in module. Then we're going to go to oscillator. Now for those of you who don't know what an oscillator is, uh, let me just explain real quick. Um, back in the 70s and the 80s and whatnot, uh, before d the digital age, you had real life synthesizers and everything was hardware as opposed to software. And so an oscillator is a piece of hardware, a big piece of hardware that would vibrate so fast that it shot, that sound waves would come from it. Um, and so in the digital, now that we're in the digital age, it's, uh, it's basically doing the same thing in digital form. So it's the fundamental sound that we're going to use uh, for an instrument. So this is the, yeah, the fundamental sound. All right, so different oscillators. We have sawtooth, triangle, parable, sine, pulse, which is a square wave, uh, impulse, noise, random. You have a lot of different oscillators here. We're going to choose sawtooth. It's at the very top. You just left click that. And you can see a sawtooth object has appeared. Now, how do we connect this? Well, we know how to connect the inputs because we did it with our old instrument. Now, it's a little different because it just says output instead of L and R. So what you do is the same thing. You hold down the left. Oh, before we connect anything, remember, we want to top right-hand corner, turn off the audio signal. So it should be red, and it should say off. So we don't blow up our speakers. <laughs> All right, so then we go to all on output. Left click, hold it down, drag, snap, and let go. And we're connected. Uh, now, as you can see, this lit up. And it lights up because if you have all the default, um, if you have it connected, then this will turn on. So it, it, it's useful because you, you know whether something's connected or not based on whether this is yellow or gray. Cool, cool feature. So right now it's monophonic. I want polyphonic, so we're going to connect it to our right as well. You, this can connect to two different outputs, so no worries. See? We can have two cables. All right. But if we played this right now, we wouldn't get anything. And the reason we wouldn't get anything is because of these inputs right here. So P, if we click on this, again, if you have hints, all you have to do is put your mouse over the P, and I'll tell you what it is. But P is going to be the pitch controller. And the A is going to be linear amplitude modulation. Now, what does all that mean? Pitch controller refers to not the hertz or the frequency, but rather the MIDI note. If I press C3 on my keyboard, then it's going to shoot six, the number 60 uh, to the sawtooth. It's going to do some calculations with the amplitude, and it's going to shoot out uh, that note. Now, amplitude is basically a trigger. It's an on and off switch. It reads whether or not um, the note has been played. So let's get this working. We're going to right click, built in module, MIDI in because we're sending in MIDI into our oscillator. And then we want note pitch. Ta da! We drag this up here, make it nice and neat. And. Um, same thing, left click, hold, drag, it's going to snap to pitch, and boom. And again, this lights up yellow so you know it's connected. Alright, now it might not be connected properly, because if I delete this, and how you delete it is you just left click on the cable, and then you press delete, and it deletes the cable. If I connect this to the amplitude, see how it connects, and it lights up. So it's important to note that y the yellow box doesn't necessarily mean you hooked up correctly. It just means you've hooked it up. All right, but let's hook this up to the pitch. The other thing we want is right-click, built-in module, MIDI in, and this time we want gate. Now the gate, what that does, all you have to do is hover over it if you have hints turned on. But what it does is it's a source for the MIDI note and on and off events. So it's basically what I told you the, ampl the amplitude was. But this is the actual event being sent to the amplitude. All right. So now we have the note 
it, the note pitch. Now we have the note that reads. Ah, man. Sorry. It's pretty late right now. <laughs> All right. I need some coffee. So this is the MIDI note it sends in to the oscillator. And the gate is whether that note's being played or whether it's not being played. If we were to put a constant number of one into here, we'd always have a sound. If we put zero, we would never have a sound. Um, so it's basically an on and off switch. All right, now let's test this. Turn down the audio output a little bit, and then I'm gonna enable our audio signal, and press a note on the keyboard, and you should see some waves come up right here, if it works. And it does. So there you have it. You have your very own sawtooth oscillator, and it's functioning. And again, now, you don't have to use sawtooth, built a module oscillator. You can use any of these. Now, certain things get a little complicated. And we'll explain that later. If you choose one of these different ones like saw FM or, you know, if it's not saw, triangle, parable, sign, if it's not something normal, you're going to get other options that you have to plug in to make it work. And we'll go over some of those in, in the next few tutorials. Um, but this is how you connect the sawtooth oscillator. So thank you for listening in. Um, my name is James, and I'm going to try to make these tutorials a lot less lengthy. Uh, this one ran over <laughs> pretty far, and I don't want them to be that long or boring. So in the next tutor few tutorials, I'm going to try to shorten them up a lot and really get to the point. But I do want to explain to you how everything works in depth so that, you know, you can understand everything. All right, enough of that. So I'll see you guys on our next tutorial. We're going to be dealing with how to set up envelopes with your oscillator. All right, see you guys later.